whole wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the mysterious FRVs once again. The unusual millisecond long signals, radio signals, that have been pretty much discovered all over the universe, in different locations around different time, and that all seem to possess only one thing in common. They all seem to be extremely bright and for the most part represent a tiny point in the night skies. They also seem to be, for the most part, in various radio frequencies, or they're usually anywhere around 1 to 1.4 GHz. And most importantly, they all seem to be extremely quick. They usually disappear after only one millisecond. But are still bright enough to be detected from the background noise, meaning that something is definitely producing them at really, really far away distances from planet Earth. And if they come from very far away distances, something extremely powerful must be producing them. And so for the past 10 years now, actually over a decade, the scientists have been desperately trying to figure out what exactly is forming these objects. But not surprisingly, when the first signal was detected, the first explanation and the first few explanations of course involved extraterrestrial intelligence. Now it didn't really take long to sort of make this a non-explanation simply because of very unusual natural variations in these signals that make them look extremely similar to a flare and not so much something that will be produced by an artificial radio. At the same time, there's quite a lot of variability in terms of frequencies, in terms of strength, and of course the location, so the extraterrestrial intelligence explanation disappeared pretty quickly. But the other explanations stayed around for quite a while. As a matter of fact, today there are explanations involving the mysterious dark matter, explanations involving some really exotic objects, black holes, strange stellar flares from extremely massive stars, and even an exotic object known as the cosmic string that I've talked about in one of the previous videos somewhere right there. But as more and more FRBs were discovered, the scientists started to slowly narrow down the potential source of these objects. And more recently, by using the Hubble telescope, the scientists have been able to very precisely measure where these objects most likely came from, and by using the specific locations in those galaxies, more or less predict what is probably not forming them, but most importantly, sort of explain what's most likely creating these unusual phenomena. First of all, the modern predictions indicate that approximately 10,000 FRBs most likely arrive to planet Earth from various locations every single day. We don't really detect that many, but that's the modern prediction based on the observations so far. Because there are so many of them, it means that something relatively common must be creating them. Something that seems to be present in most likely most galaxies out there and was present for billions and billions of years. But something that is not super common, mostly because only one single FRB has been so far confirmed in our own galaxy, the Milky Way. This particular FRB we've discussed a few months ago and this one came from what seems to be a very well known magnetar but it wasn't as powerful as some of the other FRBs coming from other galaxies. And because of this, the scientists still think that maybe some other objects are able to create them as well. And especially since some of them have been actually found to be repeating over and over. Like there's one famous one that's repeating every 16.3 days. And so explaining these particular FRBs is not really that easy. But nevertheless, there's one thing that's clear. It has to come from a relatively compact object. An object that's not really big in size, and there's only one reason for that. The length of a typical signal only takes a millisecond from the beginning to the end. And because of the speed of light, which is 300,000 kilometers per second, give or take, this means that for a signal so short to be produced, the object had to be really, really small. Otherwise, trying to explain all of this by using some sort of a larger object becomes practically impossible because of the variety of observations. And so the most common explanations, at least the ones that are most accepted right now, are extremely powerful events around magnetars or potentially neutron star collisions. Or in other words, it usually involves all sorts of different events associated with compact neutron stars. And because of the sheer power produced when two neutron stars collide, this would actually explain how such tremendously powerful radio emissions could be coming from so far away from billions of light years away from us but it would obviously not explain repeated FRBs. This would only happen once. And so in the recent study, the scientists decided to figure out and track down what could possibly be forming these by literally looking at the locations where some of them came from. Because if we look at different regions of a galaxy, we can sort of normally statistically predict what's most likely to be in that location. 
Now, for example, if a lot of these phenomena are coming from within the center of the galaxy, from essentially the central bulge or from some of the regions in the middle of the galaxy, this would imply that a lot of ancient stars are involved, or possibly even black holes that are orbiting in these regions, but it would not really involve a lot of neutron stars. And at the same time, by looking at those galaxies and seeing if they are active galaxies or possibly have a lot of different types of activity in them, the scientists can further determine what could and could not produce these unusual events. And so very recently, the scientists took a look at eight different FRBs and narrowed down five of them to very specific locations in distant galaxies. This was done using state-of-the-art analysis using Hubble telescope, and because Hubble telescope has such a precise resolution and is able to see objects really far away, it was able to precisely determine the region where FRBs came from by looking at those very distant galaxies. And the ones that it was able to track all came from what seems to be relatively similar to Milky Way galaxies that are still kind of developing stars as well, and in all cases this came from the region around the spiral arms. With all galaxies being relatively young, relatively massive, and still producing quite a lot of stars. But when these signals originated, the universe was about half its current age, so maybe about 7 to possibly 8 billion years old. And so it's sort of important to understand that it's possible that this is something that was only happening during a certain period of the existence of the universe, and might actually not be as common today. But anyway, so a lot of these signals came from the nearby locations in the galactic arms. But what exactly does this mean? Well, normally galactic spiral arms usually have a lot of young massive stars on the inside. But these particular FRBs seem to have originated in regions maybe not entirely in spiral arms, but very close to them. Which actually in some sense is very similar to where our sun is located as well. We're not entirely inside the spiral arm, but we are pretty close to one. And in these regions, we don't expect to have a lot of massive bright stars, but instead have the leftovers of these massive bright stars, which normally, at least according to our theories, are usually either black holes or sometimes neutron stars. And specifically, younger neutron stars can sometimes become magnetars and stay as magnetars for quite a long time, eventually transforming into more quiet neutron stars. At the same time, in these regions, we do not expect to find a lot of neutron star collisions either, Normally, for a neutron star collision to occur, they actually have to orbit around one another for billions and billions of years. And by the time they reach a point where they're about to collide and explode, they might end up in some really remote regions of the galaxy, normally on the outskirts or even outside of galaxies. And they would very unlikely to occur between the galactic arms. And so, at least statistically speaking, it's very unlikely to have come from either neutron star collisions, large explosive supernova or kilonova, or some unusual events in the center of a galaxy, for example involving a supermassive black hole. And so, once again, these particular observations sort of imply that it's a lot more likely that a magnetar or some sort of a unusual exotic neutron star very likely created these events. And more importantly, there are already several theories and several really good explanations to how this could possibly form from a typical magnetar. And because we know that they produce extremely powerful magnetic fields, so powerful as a matter of fact that even if you were at a distance of about a thousand kilometers away from this magnetar, it would literally stop the cell activity inside your body. And if you came any closer, it would slowly rip you apart. And so because of these ridiculously powerful magnetic fields, several major explanations always involve the magnetar. Either something orbiting the magnetar and essentially getting exposed to various magnetic fields around it, something falling into a magnetar and crashing into it, potentially releasing a tremendous amount of energy that way, or if a magnetar is very young and very powerful, it will often produce all sorts of magnetic flares, which then, as they travel away from the magnetar, might end up striking some of the particles from some of the previous flares. And as the new flare interacts with the older flare, some of these interactions start producing radio waves, which, if flare is powerful enough, can produce something that looks like an FRB. And because we've already seen one of these coming from our own galaxy from a very well-known magnetar, it only confirms the original prediction and original theory. But it's also important to understand that it only relates to these five FRBs detected in these five galaxies. We still have detected some FRBs that seem to be coming out of nowhere, and some FRBs that come from unknown sources. 
So there's still a chance that either there are different types of FRBs or that maybe these were the rare ones and all of the other FRBs are produced by something entirely different. And it's really the repeated FRBs that are most interesting to scientists right now. Their existence and their ability to produce signals very repeatedly is still not really well understood. Nevertheless, with every single study and with every single observation, we're slowly getting closer and closer to solving this really unusual mystery. And technically, this would be the first astronomical mystery of 21st century that the scientists will be able to solve. It was originally discovered in 2007, and hopefully in the next 10 years, we'll finally find an answer. But naturally, not before getting even more unusual observations and even more mysteries. As I was making this video, I also discovered that very recently, only a week ago or so, there were even more observations of extremely bright and extremely unusual repeated FRBs coming from several locations. And one of them was actually one of the brightest FRBs ever seen, which then also produced several signals coming from the same location as well. And because these FRBs were very powerful and also extremely bright and slightly different in frequency from some of the other FRBs, this once again maybe creates another mystery. Are all FRBs going to be the same? Or are we just actually seeing different phenomena from different events that seem to appear very similar to us here from planet Earth? Which of course once again makes it one of the most exciting mysteries, in astronomy at least, from the last few years or so. So once we discover more I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then though, well it looks like these particular FRBs might have certain explanation, magnetar, but some of the other FRBs are still very mysterious. Anyway, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.